Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. I have two things to talk about before I start reviewing comics, and one of them is that I'm obviously a little bit sick, and that's going to be noticeable well in my voice. And second of all, I got my first content ID claim against my videos this week, and uh, I guess that's like losing YouTube virginity? It's the uh, two Star Trek Beyond review videos that I made, if you're curious. Anyway, let's move on to the comics. Green Arrow number 9, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Stephen Byrne. I'm going to be blunt and say that I didn't really enjoy this issue. I think the story is too easily wrapped up in the end with characters expositing things they couldn't possibly know for sure, coming to a logical conclusion based on limited information. It feels a little bit like a Silver Age story in that regard. I didn't really enjoy the art either. I think the coloring is really good and it hides some really awkwardly drawn characters. The final page is a good example of less than great art. Raven number two, written by Marv Wolfman and art by Alison Borges. Not that much to say here. The story is moving at a quick pace and I'm interested in the development. There's an intriguing mystery as to what is going on, who is causing it and why. And I like what I see of Raven's character. All of this might be dependent on my general lack of prior knowledge about Raven and the lore surrounding her. This is pure speculation on my part, but her aunt and her family has to be evil, right? They seem a little bit too good to be true. Overall, not my favorite, but I'm enjoying this. Justice League number 7, written by Brian Hitch and art by Jesus Marino. I'm kind of torn on this one. For an issue where the stakes are really high, there's very little action, and most of the characters are not even aware that it's something going wrong. What we get here is some introspective monologuing and dialogue. The problem is that I'm not sure that any of it makes any sense. The Justice League members are acting out of character because they have been infected by some sort of fear entity, and we're supposed to believe that just exaggerating their fears and insecurities, they would instantly turn into complete different characters, some of them with plans on world domination. Yeah, not really feeling this. Trinity number two, art and story by Francis Manipal. I have so many questions about this, but only in a good way. I can't wait to find out more about this story. You think you have a grip on what kind of story this is, with a few questions as to who and why, but then it takes a twist. Things from the last issue that was a little weird and nonsensical now makes perfect sense. Yet this revelation only opens up further question as to who and why, but also who knows what. Manipul's art is as always fantastic, but sadly there are no creative playfulness with the comic panels themselves this time. I suppose that is what happens when you're writing and drawing the book by yourself. I'm also going to complain a little bit about something that is not actually related to the comic itself. It's that there's about somebody posting covers of future issues of this book, and those are kind of spoiling the story. Story. I really wish I could have avoided seeing that. Batman number 9, written by Tom King and art by Michael Janine. So this is a setup issue. Batman plans on going to Santa Prisca to retrieve the psycho pirate from Bane, so that he can cure Gotham Girl from her trauma. To do that, he needs help, so he basically assembles a suicide squad from Arkham inmates, apparently under the supervision of Amanda Waller, but she doesn't appear this issue. The people who do appear this issue, I have some questions about. One in particular, but that is a last page reveal, so it would be wrong to spoil it for anyone. Suffice to say that it is something that I'm really, really resisting. Other than said reveal, there is not that much to this issue. We do get some insight into why Bane wants the Psycho Pirate. There are also some stuff about characters I've never heard of before and that's not really very interesting. Superman number 9, written by Peter Tomasi and art by Patrick Gleason. This is great. This little two-parter is really cool on its own, with Superman being super dad on an adventure with his son, but if you're familiar what this draws from, it gives you something extra. Superman and John have been transported to the island from the story Justice League New Frontier by Darwin Cook, who sadly passed away earlier this year. If you're not familiar with that story, I highly recommend you reading it or watch the animated movie based on it. This doesn't really deal with anything major from that story though, which is understandable, if not a little bit disappointing. We get some hints towards an explanation for how and why Superman and John were transported to this island, and that seems to be connected to the larger Rebirth story. Also, if you've read this, 
Can't we pretty much confirm the identity of the mysterious Mr. Oz by now, based on that last page? I, it's not shown to be Mr. Oz in those panels, but it must surely be what they're hinting at. I really like John in this book. He seems more like a real person in this than he does in action comics. I get that he's mostly been a background character in that, but still. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment and subscribe and share this video. If you didn't like it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. That is it for me this week.